Hello and welcome to Meadweek. I'm Brian Spann. On this edition, hundreds of thousands of Department of Defense civilian employees, including yours truly, began taking their furlough days this week as the result of congressional sequestration earlier this year. Earlier this week, during this first week of furloughs, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Martin Dempsey, has this message. Hi, I'm General Marty Dempsey, 18th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. About 90 days ago, I sent a short video out to the field uh, as the uh, reality of sequestration came upon us, the day it was signed into law. And I asked you at that time to help us lead our way through this period of uncertainty, and you have. I also want to come to you today because it's the day after some of our civilian teammates began furloughs, uh, an, an outcome that I find both discouraging and disappointing. But again, I look around and I see that you are leading your way through this. My commitment to you is that we'll do the same here in the Pentagon. I also want to point out that, uh, as we predicted, we're beginning to see some effects on our readiness. Uh, those effects will deepen. They'll be difficult to overcome. Once again, though, it will take uh, solid leadership and communications as we try to understand uh, what we can accomplish and what we cannot. Although sequestration and furlough issues have dominated the scene in 2013, the pace at Fort Meade hasn't slowed down a bit. Here's a brief look back at the first six months of the year. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Meade TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Meade week. Installation Commander Colonel Ed Rothstein, General Keith Alexander, Commander of U.S. Cyber Command, Major General Michael Innington, Commander of the Military District of Washington, and USO Metro President Elaine Rogers join special guests Stephanie McMahon and David Otonga from World Wrestling Entertainment for the ceremonial ribbon cutting. And forecasters are predicting we might not get above freezing for several more days. Despite the weather, the Defense Information School held a groundbreaking ceremony this week that marks the beginning of the school's expansion by almost 100,000 square feet. The expansion is designed to accommodate an increase in the annual student load from 2,700 to 3,500 students. According to the VA, more than 80,000 veterans living in Anne Arundel and Howard counties now have access to VA health care services at the clinic. The clinic is located just behind the Kimbrough Ambulatory Care Center at 2479 5th Street. The clinic is the sixth community-based outpatient clinic operated by the VA Maryland health care system. On Wednesday, Fort Meade and Pacern Military Housing officially broke ground on the $72 million Reese Crossings Complex. This no cost of the government initiative is a first for junior enlisted service members. This is our first effort into junior enlisted housing and we're going to take a look at it, see how it works and then evaluate where it could add future benefit to the Army on other posts. We are going to prioritize what we can and cannot do and we're going to commit to that. You're not going to work overtime. You're not going to work in the office without pay to get something done, to get something uh, complete and done. You will go home. He turned down an invitation to the White House to be at Fort Meade for Holocaust Remembrance Day. Holocaust survivor Robert Baer regaled a packed McGill training center with multiple stories of surviving the Holocaust in the aftermath of World War II. When you're in Hawaii, you grow to love your culture, but you grow to love being American. And that's what I grew up, I, I used to pass by the Pearl Harbor uh, Memorial every day, and I had no clue what it stood for. I had no clue what it stood for. I thought it was a nice white, you know, structure in the water there. And as I got older, and started to appreciate what that stood for and the memorial that that stood for. It gave me a greater appreciation to be American. But first, Fort Meade hasn't gotten a lot of use out of Nathan Hale Hall since a fire in 2007. But that's not to say it's not being utilized. We caught this red fox last week taking a meal back to its presumptive home in the now empty hall. And while the wildlife on post is something to take pride in, these are wild animals and should be treated as such. Use caution, like our fox shown here displaying tremendous traffic safety skills. Hello and welcome to Mead Week, I'm Brian Spann. Fort Meade Fire and Emergency Teams responded to a two alarm fire last Sunday evening that destroyed two homes and damaged two others in the Potomac Place neighborhood. Five families were evacuated, thankfully no injuries were reported. In terms of damage, the two houses located at 5th Corps Boulevard and Taylor Lane were destroyed. A third home sustained smoke damage, while the roof on a part of a fourth house was also damaged. And as you serve, you know, it's lifelong education and learning. I said it's also part of um, um, our culture that, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an ethical process. We hold uh, ourselves uh, to a very high standard. In fact, we hold ourselves to a much higher standard than any other profession out there uh, in the country or around the world. Hello! Hey, thank you, WPOC. I've always wanted to say this. This bud's for you, Team Eve. Woohoo! 